What's going on guys? In this video, I wanted to go through what I believe to be the biggest kind of hindrance or opposing force against productivity and success in 2021. So in the examples that I'm going to show you, um, I'm talking about e-commerce specifically, but I have experienced that this has affected and can creep into um, other facets of my life that are super important, like whether it be relationships with my wife and friends or my personal finances or my personal fitness. So what are we talking about here? I'm talking about complacency. I'm going to show you exactly how I let myself become complacent with my life um, at the beginning of this year in 2021 and how that started to become a detriment to our business. You know, how it started costing us $30,000 and if not more, right, if I didn't wake up to the fact that, hey, I was becoming complacent and I wasn't, you know, seeking a better version of myself every single day and really kind of aspiring for, you know, greatness and, and just to be better, right? So if you're new here to the channel, I just wanted to welcome you in. My name's Josh and I'm a seven-figure entrepreneur who loves all things productivity, personal finance and e-commerce. As we get into the video and talk about complacency, just wanted to encourage you to sit back, relax and take some notes. Let's get into it. So I'm in my screen right now and what you're going to see here is an e-commerce store that my partner and I have been working on. So you can see here that, you know, uh, since its inception, um, we've done th over $350,000 of sales and it's been good, right? So just as a little bit of a story time, um, this business actually was my partner's. He was a student of mine who kind of reached out to me and was like, hey, look, I need some help. And you can see here, he was doing great, right? Like he was doing $1,000, $2,000 a month and it was, it was successful for him, right? He's a, he's a young guy and just so proud of him. But when we started working together was July, right? I started mentoring him and kind of showing him kind of the ropes and the tips and tricks of how to really kind of make this a legitimate business. Um, so July happened and things were great. Like we really clicked. Um, now we're, you know, I call him my brother and we, yeah, we just love working together. And in August, right, I saw huge potential in this business and I was like, hey, look, let me buy a portion of the business. Um, let me buy in and um, let me help you. You know, I, want, I, I see potential here and I like you and you're the right kind of person that I want to work with. So let me buy in and let's go and kill it, right? So that's what we did. All right, so August, uh, we went out, we created a company and, you know, I took a share out of that. And you can see here that from the very beginning, as soon as we started, um, the, not only the mentoring, but, you know, the partnership, it, it started working really, really well. Like you can see here, there was like a 100% growth from the previous month. And since then, it was another 100% growth. And from August, um, September, we hit 20,000. October 36, November 58, December 63, and January 60,000. So this is kind of where everything was working really, really well, right? And this is kind of where I talk about complacency because you can see here, you know, everything was great, right? We were going through the holiday seasons cruising and we're doing $50,000, $60,000 per month. It wasn't too stressful, right? I was really happy and I was kind of just happy just to leave it. What happened after that, and this is going to come to bite me in the butt and you're going to see, is in February, our sales dropped by 50%. It's, oh gosh, this was a wake up call for me. But during this time, right, and this followed through to March as well, to the end of March, this was a big wake up call for me because it kind of showed me that, hey, look, you're not invincible. And it really humbled me. It showed me that, sure, you've, you've done well in business and you know, you know how to do marketing and all these kinds of things, but at the end of the day, I'm just another guy. This really humbled me. And it took me a lot to admit that and put that out into the world. But I'm glad that this happened because I can share this not only with you guys, but you know, with everyone that's in my circle, uh, with my friends, my family, and just try to provide that value, um, right? So why did this happen, right? So not only, it was, I was complacent, right? We were spending um, a couple hundred bucks a day, making uh, a good amount of money, like $60,000 per month is not something to be you know, laughed at. It was profitable um, and I was very, very happy, but, a big thing happened in our life, right? Like my wife and I, we're originally from Australia and we, in February and March, we actually moved, we, t we kind of uprooted ourselves and we 
taken ourselves halfway across the world and we're now living in Houston, Texas. So we're only here um, temporarily um, just for business and trying to get our roots in here. But, you know, with this move, it really caused a big issue, right? At this point where I was like, okay, okay, something, something's wrong. I need to do something. I need to pull my head out of the ground. Yeah, kind of really get to work. So what did I do? So I'm going to show you exactly what I did in my ad account. Let me just break it down, right? Let me go down to, um, let's just take February and March, right? I'm gonna show you right now. So you can see here, right? Um, we're doing like $2,000 a day. And then around middle of February, I was like, whoa, that's weird. I haven't seen three digits in a while. And you know, 565 and I was like, oh gosh, something's happening. Oh, maybe it's just the algorithm because this is when all the iOS 14 stuff started happening. And I was like, okay, let's just leave it. I left it, right? But it didn't really recover. And it kept going further and further down, like $192, guys. Like that's, oh, that's, that's, um, that was a big hit for us. I need to fix this. I need to do something about it. And so we slowly started improving things and it started picking up um, nonetheless uh, towards the end of March, right? But let me just show you what I did around the first and the 15th of March. This is after we settled down in Houston and we've kind of fixed our sleeping pattern and all that kinds of stuff. So I'm gonna go into my ad account right now. Okay guys, so we're in the ad account right now and I'm gonna show you, um, we have spent about $106,000 ever since we started um, this partnership and this company. We can see here that our CPMs are super low. Everything was really good. So I'm gonna show you what led to my complacency. So CPMs, 3.5. Never seen anything like this on any of my other businesses. It's usually generally my CPMs are anywhere between, you know, $10 all the way up to $20, right? Even then it's a very healthy CPM to look for and kind of a good KPI to hit. And if I have a look at this ad account, I'm having a look at kind of objectively, I can see there is room for improvement, right? Like our outbound click-through rate is less than 1% but we kind of make up for that on our store because we have an overall conversion of four to five percent. A lot of, you're gonna see here that a lot of the metrics are kind of not picked up here. And you can see like, you know, even, even my columns here don't add up because of the whole iOS 14 thing, the way that attribution works, all that kinds of stuff. But let me just show you exactly how all this complacency started, right? So from 1st of August all the way through till um, 31st of December, for example, right? We spent, an total of $48,830. Now, if I go and have a look at the, the store for the same period, August, all the way through to 31st of December, 200,000, right? Okay, so we got it up here. So we spent, let's just say 50,000, right? And we've made back 200,000. So that was a four times return. Our break even on this is about 1.3. So anything above 1.3, even if it was on scale, maybe 1.5 or 1.6, we could have handled that and been profitable. It wouldn't be that profitable, but we would have been profitable. But you can see here, <laughs> there's a lot of potential for complacency to kind of creep in because we were hitting a four times return and I was super happy. I wasn't working that hard. Like it was just me understanding how all of this works and kind of putting it out there on using Facebook's algorithm and it started working. But let's have a look. When we started going downhill from pretty much January. So January was great. Um, and let me go through and show you January. We spent uh, 19,000. So again, you know, three times return, we dropped by one, but I was still happy, you know, like, uh, as I said, our break even was 1.3. So I kind of just left it, left it. And this is where we were really preparing to come um, and uproot ourselves from Australia and move to the US. So in February, you know, we spent 16,000, we made back 35. So now it's starting to drop from four to three, to two now, and you can have a look in March. It, it, this is when we were just moved in. This is where it really started to hurt, right? You can see here, like March was, you know, 15,000 made back uh, 35. So we, we, because we picked back up, but you can see here, like for the span of a whole week, I was like, oh gosh, you know, I need to slow down on the ads. Um, our conversion rate dropped, all these kinds of things. So what did I do? Um, I went back and I sat back and I had, took more of a holistic view. I was like, okay, Josh, you're becoming complacent. You need to kind of get a kick up the butt and have a look and wake up to what was happening. So I originally knew that our landing page was always not so great, right? But it always converted really well at like 5% and always brought in like a four to 5% uh, five times rollouts. There's that saying, right? It's like, if it's not broken, don't 
don't change it or don't fix it. I pretty much stuck to that. But when this happened, I was like, okay, I really need to fix that. I need to fix that landing page. So for the span of from uh, March 5th all the way through till 16th of March, I worked on not only improving the um, product page, but also the ads. So you can see here, very, very low spend. And I'll go through that in another video about my template of a landing page and how to kind of, uh, what elements to have to make sure that it's as highly converting as possible. I kind of want to focus on the ad side of this because even though yes, landing page is important, it's just too much of, it's just too deep of a topic to go through in one video. So let's go through here in March. What we're going to see is um, I started playing around with a lot of things here was new creatives. I was like, okay, things are just not working. I need to get new creatives out the door. Now, what's the quickest way to do that? I found is dynamic creative testing. It's a setting that you can do at the ad set level and you can literally just have like five creatives, throw it out there um, with your best converting headline and your ad copy and just let Facebook do it for you. So that's exactly what I did. If you have a look here and if I go to DCT, I'm gonna filter by DCT. You can see here that in March, and I'm still testing it today. I had a campaign where I just did new ads, right? I spent $200 a day and I let it run for six days. And I was like, okay, look, tell me what the best converting ads are. And the best thing about this guys is that you can actually do a breakdown. You can see here the audiences that I did. Um, I did broad uh, stacked interests. So all the interests that were working the best for us over the period from August till January, threw them all in the one ad set. Uh, the 1% look lookalikes that were doing the best as well and a one to 3% um, excluding the one, right? Pretty much what I did was I was like, hey, go do your thing. And you can see most of the spend went to the broad. At this point, we had about 19,000 purchases on our store. Like at this point, we just needed to, we knew that the pixel was seasoned, right? So we didn't need to worry so much about, you know, lookalikes or all that kinds of stuff because I knew the pixel would know who our ideal customer would be. So we started testing. I threw five creatives in there, one headline, one ad copy. And then from this, guys, um, if I get rid of the filter, what I did was I put it straight into one of these APOs here. So you can see that this ABO is pretty much all of the best results. With DCT campaigns, you can actually do a breakdown and find out what the best creatives are, the combinations. I took those and threw them all into this campaign. And I, at, for each ad set, I tested an ABO and tested at $200 a day. And you can see in March, this uh, was the thing that kind of made us win, right? So again, my break-even runs was 1.3. So we're pretty happy here, you know? Okay, so from the DCT, I pretty much went and um, as you can see here, I had all these other ad sets and I was just, I was very cautious, right? I didn't want to um, spend too much, but you can see I was spending anywhere between 20 to uh, $23 um, a day. And you can see that it was working well, right? Like overall, our return was good. And like like I said, our break-even ROAS is 1.3. So anything above that, I was really happy with. So you can see here like 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 2, 1.8, uh, 1.5, 2.6, pretty decent results. But I was like, hmm, maybe I can do a little bit better here. Maybe I can go ahead and get the ad sets out of the learning phase quicker and let Facebook optimize at a, at a faster rate, right? As you can guess, guys, we are in the gifting niche um, in the car. So what I did was I went around here and you can see that the um, budgets that I'm using now is this one, for example, and I lumped them all together. So I not only had aggregate you know, just a broad, right? Like every country in the world, excluding the US and UK, because we have separate campaigns for that, but we just split it out. And this is what attributed to us coming back to profit at the end of March. You can see here, you know, we will going from what, like 400, 500 to 1.3, 1.1, 1.4, 1.7, 2.8, 1.7, you know, and, and so on and so forth. So by doing this, guys, I literally, by not only testing new creatives and new headlines and throwing it all into the DCT um, campaign and letting Facebook do the testing for me, I took all the results and then I put it all into the same ad sets, right? At much, much larger spends because I had confidence that they have been proven to win on their own at smaller budgets, but they weren't able to get out of the testing phase, right? They weren't able to get out of the learning phase of, and, and to do that, you need 50 conversions per ad set on a seven day window. So I was like, okay, 
I'm gonna lump it all together, $200 a day, and this was the one that really, really helped us. And you can see here, if I have a look at this month, this month to date, you can see we've spent about 2.8, and the re return on these are much better, right? 1.6, 2.5, 1.8, 1.8, and 1.8. And if we go back to our, um, our Shopify, you can see here, month to date, within six days, we are literally at 15,000. It's just been a killer. So this month, we let, let me just go back. So we spent um, 6,000 and made back 15.5 thousand. Now, a lot of that was testing and we are still figuring out what's the best element of this. You know, you can see here, there's another DCT of um, $1,000 spent because I'm testing new creatives all the time. But if we take the testing out of it, you know, we've got 5,000 spent and 15.5 thousand back. This is, you know, where we want to be. We want to aim for at least 1.3, but ideally our KPI target is to hit two. You can see here, uh, we're doing a three times ROAS, so we're super happy, but you know, I'm not gonna let complacency hit me again and kind of creep up on me again, right? So our goal now is to not only leverage this, but to make sure that our backend is more streamlined. It really works together in unison and therefore is going to help us, and I'm confident in this, help us to get to the four times, the five times return on ad spend. So we're really just making sure that, okay, we've done all the testing, okay, great. Now we need to really get the optimizations down. Let's cut all the bad stuff. Let's get rid of the things that are, plug all the holes in our business to really boost up that profitability and then solidify it by having our backend really set up and really make sure that that kind of works, right? So uh, another point that I wanted to mention is you can see here that we're doing something just under three return overall, including the testing, right? But I wanna show you guys something. If I go ahead and filter to all of the ad sets that are spending money, right? Go ahead, filter by selection. And that's where all my bottom uh, things are gonna start working. You're gonna see here, this month, uh, total revenue, sorry, is only 11,800. But I'm gonna bring you back here, our actual revenue on our Shopify store is 15,000. So let me bring up the calculator and kind of show you why this is a big impact. So let's say for example, we had, um, let's, let's go to, uh, this here, let's go 11,838 divided by 6105. Based on Facebook's metrics only, so we'd have a return of about 1.9, you can see. Now, it's still above our break even, so we'd be pretty happy with that. But, you know, there'll be, it, it wouldn't feel as good, right? So, if I was to go back, go back to my store, I'm gonna take 15, 6.1, by 6.5, 2.54, much, much better, 2.55, much better, much happier with that, and um, it's only upwards from here. With that being said, what I'm trying to get at, guys, is that, so with Facebook's attempt to kind of, you know, adjust their advertising platform for the iOS 14 changes that are coming, you can see here that there is about $4,000, $5,000 of revenue that isn't attributed into my ad account. Now, what that means is that I can't reliably rely on the ad account alone anymore. I need to actually have a look every single day at, okay, what's my revenue and how much did I spend and calculate my return based off that. Because if I went specifically just on my ad account, you can see that not only would I be disheartened, but I, would, I might have turned off ad sets that were still optimizing or still learning. And I could have made a detrimental kind of move that really hurts our business, right? So I really wanna stress that you wanna take a more holistic view. You know, you wanna take the overall ROAS of, you know, total revenue divided by total ad spend, right? Have a look at that and then let that be your kind of north, your true north, right? Like let that be your guiding metric. So guys, uh, that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys really got some value out of this and kind of understood how or the threat of complacency can affect your life. And I hope that my examples kind of help you wake up. Maybe if you're in that situation, maybe it'll help you wake up. So yeah, I just wanted to reiterate, you know, the key takeaways from this. Testing is so, so important, not only for creatives, but for your landing page design, but also your offers on your page. Like if something's not working, something needs to change. Like you need to test one thing at a time and really note down the results of that test and make adjustments as you go. So testing creatives, testing landing page, 
and just always, always, always be testing. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, you know, it took a lot for me to own up to the fact that, hey, look, I made a mistake and kind of come back from it. So yeah, if you guys liked it, please be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I will be um, issuing, like, putting videos out every single week. Uh, I'll catch you in the next one and hope you have a good one, guys. Bye for now.